So today we're going to be turning some cardboard and craft foam into a Power Rangers Time Force Morpher. So start by cutting yourself three or four egg-shaped pieces from cardboard and a smaller egg-shaped piece. These are all in the template that should be popping up on your screen. And then you just want to glue them one right on top of the other. A little bit of hot glue with the smallest piece going on the very top, right in the center. So you'll have yourself a little stack of cardboard eggs. And then you're going to cut a small egg piece out of craft foam, 2 millimeter craft foam. And then you're going to cut out all these little lines around the template. So you just want to cut those out with an X-Acto knife. So it should look like that. And then you just want to take some puffy paint. And it doesn't matter what color it is because we'll be painting over it later on anyway. But just take some puffy paint and paint on all the little designs with the puffy paint. These are actually engraved in it, but um, it's kind of difficult to do that. So I'm just using the puffy paint and doing it in reverse to make it easier. So then I took a piece of 2mm craft foam and I heated it up on the dashboard of my car. You can also use a heat gun if you have one, but the dashboard of my car was convenient. You just want to put it over something domed and stretch it out. I used a plastic Easter egg here. And so that egg shape that I cut out of the other piece, I just traced that onto the dome shape I just made on that piece of craft foam. And I cut that out with a pair of scissors so that that little piece is kind of a dome-shaped egg that should fit right back in there, except that now it's domed. So with some 5mm craft foam, I cut out the little button pieces. You can just trace those right in there onto some 5mm craft foam. And then paint all three of those bright orange. While those are drying, the puffy paint should be dry on that piece of craft foam, so you can now paint that metallic gunmetal gray. You can go right over the puffy paint, paint the whole thing, and then take a flat circle. You can either do cardboard, I'm just using a plastic bead here, and glue that onto the cardboard. You want it to be gold, and then glue the piece of craft foam right on top. You see the little gold bead in the middle there. Put a little line of glue around the inside of that cutout. I'm not using hot glue here because it will dry too fast, I'm just using uh, regular glue. And then stick that dome-shaped piece in there. So you get that little raised edge. And then you can paint that as well. I just painted mine gunmetal gray to match the rest of the top, but you could paint it um, multicolors to make it look like there's lights on if you wanted. It's all in a personal preference. So you want to take a piece of craft foam and put some glue on it. And you're just going to wrap that around all the layers of cardboard, reaching the top layer of foam. Um, you should actually use white for this. I used black and the paint didn't look good on it later on, which you'll see later on in the video. But um, So you'll actually want to use white craft foam for this part, but mine is unfortunately black at the moment. And so then you just wrap it all the way around the whole thing. And you have to kind of cut the edges so that they match up perfectly on the edge there. It takes a little bit to get it right. But you just go all the way around. And because the cardboard were different widths, you'll get that little curved edge, the tapered edge there. So on the bottom, cut off any excess, pull a little bit of glue between the foam and the cardboard, and press it so it sits tight against the cardboard. So here it is once I've got the entire thing covered in that foam. So now that the buttons are dry, you want to go back and glue those into their respective holes. And then paint that puffy paint triangle metallic silver so it stands out a little bit from the gunmetal gray. And then you'll paint the outside metallic silver as well. This is where it would have come in handy to have the craft foam white because once it's dry, the metallic silver kind of looks like the gunmetal gray. And had I used white craft foam, it would have looked more silver. So um, definitely use the white craft foam. So then you want to paint on the yellow triangles and the yellow circle on the middle of the orange buttons. And then in the circle you want to put those little orange lines to break up the circle in the center there. Just like that. Then cut a small rectangle from some 2mm craft foam. And paint half of it bright orange. And then you'll cut a long oval out of some 5mm craft foam. This is on the template as well. And just paint that metallic silver. 
and glue that half orange piece right into the center of that. And then you glue the whole stack right onto the side of the morpher. So then take a long strip of craft foam and paint that silver on one side. This is where you can see if you, I'd used white craft foam, it would have looked much more silver than the black craft foam did. Um, the black craft foam just darkened the paint too much, so white craft foam would have been good, but I'm using white for the armband, so I'll put a little glue on the back of the morpher, glue it on, and then you can put some sticky back Velcro on one side, and the corresponding piece on the bottom side or the other side, so that you can wrap that right around your wrist. You can also use um, snaps on this if you want a more secure fastener, but I'm using Velcro so it will fit my brother's arm as well since he's a huge Power Rangers fan. So here's the finished morpher. 900 settings and not one of them's the one that I need. How is it possible that the Time Force morpher does everything except tell time?